Hello scholars, in this video we're going to take a look at the last section of assignment 7.3 which is about ocean pollution and overfishing. So starting off with a true or false question for you, um, the oceans are so vast that it is impossible to pollute them. What do you think? Seems kind of obvious, right? Well, 50 years ago or so, we really thought that it was impossible to pollute the oceans. They're just so big. It'd be like peeing in the ocean. Who cares? But you got enough people peeing and it makes a difference. So one big difference we're seeing is in the amount of plastic debris. Here's a picture of a real bird, no joke, albatross bird killed on a remote Pacific island by ingesting a large volume of plastic delivered by ocean currents. Okay, remote Pacific Island. And we know that garbage litters the ocean um, or that we see it on the beaches, but from there, currents carry it around the world. Plastic bags, fishing nets, etc., can kill marine life. And of the 115 marine mammal species, 49 are known to have eaten or become entangled in marine debris. And of 111 of 312 seabird species are known to ingest plastic. Plastic debris also harms fishing equipment. You might think this isn't a big deal, but when you consider the Great Pacific Garbage Patch being the size of Texas, it's a huge convergence of garbage, and it's estimated to be bigger than the state of Texas. So there's a little diagram to show you, pretty much right in the middle, middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's not real deep, I mean, we call it a garbage patch, not really a garbage island, you can't stand on it. But, um, you know, these things are all floating. And the bad thing is that with sunlight hitting it, the UV breaks down the plastic, and so it just disintegrates into smaller and smaller pieces of plastic without ever really biodegrading. It's not like you're taking the plastic and returning it back to basic raw nutrients. So it becomes harder to clean up as those particles get even smaller. We also know that oil is a major pollutant in the oceans. We get much of our petroleum by drilling into seafloor deposits um, using offshore platforms. And oil spills when transporting that oil can be catastrophic. I have you take a look at the Exxon Valdez video and the BP um, Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico a few years back. Those are extreme those were extreme catastrophes, and much of the oil seen on the beaches here in Santa Barbara are actually from natural seepage. Not to say that some of it isn't due to leaky pipes, but this is one of the areas, I think it's the third most common or the third most seepage of all the areas along the whole western seaboard. And even think about the, the name for the beach just north of UCSB, Coal Oil Point. We also see algal blooms. They're called red tides, um, or in some cases they are red tides. And this is, a, this is a type of pollution because it's out of control growth of a toxic algae species. They're called dinoflagellates, and there's a picture of them there. They kill fish and other organisms. They are caused by excess nutrient runoff from fertilizers. And they're called red tides because, as you can see, some of them will color the water red. And um, this toxic can really affect sea life. Uh, there's been some cases of seeing seals or sea lions basically looking somewhat delirious from the toxic thing, from the toxin that's produced from these um, from these molds, the fungus, I mean, sorry, from the algae, from the algae. Uh, overfishing. Okay, so I got a question for you. Approximately what percentage of the world's fisheries are currently being fished at maximum sustainable harvest or more? See if you can guess the correct answer to this. Well, if you said 75%, you are correct. Fully exploited half of them meaning they're at their, you know, we're, we're maximally sustaining, pulling out what we can. Overexploited, you can see these ones here. Um, moderately exploited, 20%, only 3%, 3 are considered underexploited or, you know, at no risk of, um, of uh, I guess you could say, perishing. So we're emptying the oceans, basically. As bad as some pollution problems may be, the oceans today su suffer most from overfishing. Oceans are vulnerable to the tragedy of the commons, as we've studied this year. And for centuries, people approach fishing as if there's always more fish in the sea. Um, if you think about uh, one example that comes to my mind is the Chesapeake Bay, which we learned about a little bit in that video that we watched about dead fish from the um, nitrates runoff into the Chesapeake. And that area used to just teem with cod. And now they're basically, there's no cod fishing there anymore. When I say used to, I mean like, I mean, 100 years ago, 80 years ago, 
Fishing had already taken a toll on marine ecosystems many decades before ecologists began studying them. We've only been studying marine ecosystems for, you know, maybe a few decades or so, basically since like the birth of environmental science. So let's take a look at the breakdown of where we get our fish. Obviously, most of it's from marine capture, meaning from the sea. Um, and a lot of it is from the marine aquaculture, which is like doing aquaculture with seawater. And then you can see above that inland aquaculture and then inland capture. And how have these percentages changed? I mean, most of the fish that we got used to be from the sea. That would be from in 1950. Um, well, I'm sorry, let me say it. Um, in 1950, the vast majority of, of it was from the sea. And now we see a lesser percentage of it coming from the sea and a greater percent coming from aquaculture, which not a bad deal. Um, but we do see definitely less, um, less inland capture uh, than we used to, um, I mean, percentage-wise. Okay, let's take a look at aquaculture versus capture fisheries. In the world, we can see that capture fisheries have declined this is since 1970, whereas aquaculture has definitely increased. In China, it's gone berserk. Um, you can see that they are relying on it heavily. And then the rest of the world, you can see their downward trend in capture, upward trend in aquaculture. Why the downward trend in capture? Well, obviously you could say because there's not as much fish out there. Um, and you can also say that it's becoming more expensive for a lot of people to do. So this is just another graph showing a similar kind of thing, showing the amount of catch in the three major oceans. Atlantic Ocean hasn't changed much in the last 20 years. Indian Ocean has increased a lot. Pacific Ocean um, has also increased not quite as much as the Indian Ocean. So what kind of changes are we seeing? Most volume today is pulled from deeper and farther offshore waters. I should say farther, not further. And previously productive coastlines for subsistence fishing are now basically monopolized by international operations, leaving the poor to fight over the scraps. So you can kind of have this image in your mind here. This guy would be called a, subsist a subsistence farmer, I mean fisher, or at least he's small scale, right? But today there's no longer really much low tech, meaning skin diving, hand lining, rod fishing, hand netting, etc. Fishing. Nowadays, fishermen use satellites, spotter planes, etc., and large scale methods. So, this is really what a modern fisherman looks more like as he sits in his boat. And the kind of techniques they use are all major large scale. One is bottom trawling, which destroys whole ecosystems. Nets and bars are dragged across the bottom. They flatten the benthic structure, so, you know, whatever coral might be there or anything like that. It's devastating habitat for marine organisms. You can just see how you're dragging around, dragging this net and this rigid, um, whatever it is, because I'm kind of a great, very, very, very destructive, and bringing with it everything that's there. You can see here the fish that the fisherman was hoping to catch, but all these other things that come with the catch. I mean, we got urchins here, we got some kind of like uh, crabs or some kind of shellfish. Was this thing maybe like um, some kind of um, ray or something like that? Everything in, everything in its path. The other major technique for industrial fishing is drift netting. And this is also, this also causes high bycatch. And by catch, by bycatch, we mean catching things that you don't intend to. But it also results in a lot of ghost fishing, which means unintentional catch by lost or abandoned nets. So it's when you're not even out there, these things are just floating around. And this includes the drowning of dolphins and other mammals. So here's an example of a hammerhead shark wrapped up in a net, likely a net that's no longer being used. And again, another case of that phantom fishing. And here. And here. And here. The other example of industrial fishing techniques is long lines. So these contain thousands of hooks on fishing lines several miles long, often catching and dragging bycatch great distances. So this might be a typical boat. You can see all the different um, pieces of bait along here, hundreds of them, maybe thousands. And um, so this is kind of like the image here, um, another image of it. The thing about it is it accidentally kills thousands of endangered sea turtles and seabirds each year as they just grab the bait and then get hooked. And it's hard to save an animal that's been fighting a hook as it's dragged over miles of ocean. 
So one remedy to this could be aquaculture, where we are growing the fish in fish farms. We've already talked about this a bit, so let's just hit some some major major review here, major points. Um, it's a controlled environment, obviously. It is currently providing one third of the world's fish for consumption. 220 species are being farmed. It's the fastest growing food, fastest growing type of food production. And we can see a little breakdown here. Um, it's mostly fish, as you can see, some mollusks, aquatic plants like seaweed, maybe for making sushi rolls, things like that, nori rolls, and um, crustaceans, so shrimp, whatnot. It's been doubling about every seven years. You can see a huge increase in it. And the environmental impacts, the density of the animals leads to disease, um, which means you have to use antibiotics to combat that. And this, um, this disease is risk to food security. It can generate large amounts of waste, especially nitrates from all the fish manure. And often animals are fed grain, which is not very energy efficient. It would make more sense if you eat the grain yourself rather than eating the fish that eat the grain. Remember, you lose 90% of that energy as you go up one trophic scale, according to the second law of thermodynamics. And sometimes animals are fed fish meal from wild caught fish. So why would you want to do that? Well, a lot of the fish that are left in the ocean are the fish that are less desirable to eat. They don't taste as good because we've overfished a lot of what is, is good to eat. So what you end up doing is far, um, farm fishing the food that people do want to eat, and what you go out and catch is the... Um, the fish that you're going to feed those farm fish. So it seems a little backwards, but um, better to be vegetarian, I think. Farmed animals may escape into the wild and interbreed with, compete with, or spread disease to wild animals. Here's an example of a transgenic or genetically engineered salmon on the top, much bigger. It could do a much better job of competing for resources than the wild salmon, which could make the wild salmon um, be, go, be brought to extinction. And as far as the benefits, there are definitely some. Uh, they provide a reliable protein source for people. This increases food security. They can be small scale, local, and sustainable. You don't need a big shipping vessel to go out hundreds of miles into the ocean. It reduces fishing pressure on wild stocks and eliminates bycatch. That's huge. And it has the potential to use less fossil fuels in fishing. The potential, of course. Um, as long as you are not having to, as long as you're not feeding your fish with grain that was grown halfway around, halfway across the country. And it has the potential to be very energy efficient. Um, and so in the same way, we can talk about uh, not eating fish that's too high.